Got a question for Andrew? Email him at axandrew at odyssey.com. Axandrew on Hot 104.1. Yeah, man, waking up with the home team. Big wins on your Wednesday. Want to let you know within the next 30 minutes, y'all, we're going to be hooking somebody up with tickets to go see none other than Janet Jackson. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. In the loop. <laughs> Janet Jackson and Nelly on stage. St. Louis is going up within the next 30 minutes. But right about now, y'all know what time it is. Y'all know Shorty and her show of love. Tell your auntie I say what's happening. Got our girl Tiffany Fox. Mm-hmm. Feeling foxy and lovely. And mm-hmm. That's too much. Keep going. All right. Ooh. And right about now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it is time to mm-hmm. Andrew. Shorty and Tiffany Fox. Oh, no, it's actually the machine. Okay, this is where Drew, uh, whatever, Fox, let's go. All right, so a girl writes in, she says, after the breakup of a long relationship, how long should you wait before dating someone new? In your opinion, what time frame is appropriate? Mm-hmm. We were together for almost six years. It seems like he fell right into another situation. I guess I'm still in my grieving stage because I could not see myself with someone that quickly. Mm-hmm. It's only been 45 days. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like men really don't love like women and can just move on like nothing happened. What's your opinion? Mm-hmm. Oh, I do have an opinion on that. 45 days, you guys been together. You know what? Congratulations. <laughs> wait, um, wait, wait, what? Wow. Why oh, yeah. Congratulating oh, yeah, because a lot of folks don't last a week. They were together six years. They were together six years. Yes, okay. they've been together for six years. Mm-hmm. It's been 45 days. Mm-hmm. You have to understand, a lot of folks don't last a minute. A lot of folks don't last a year. Mm-hmm. When I'm in, when I'm in relationship, my longest relationship was three years. Okay. Okay. You understand that? Oh, you done. So, you have to understand... <laughs> Listen, listen, Linda. Okay, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm waiting. You have to understand that a lot of folks go into relationships because they want to feel like what they can get out of that relationship. And they call sex, money, jewelry, cars, and maybe a free meal. And want to lay up (laughs) and don't want to propose to the girl. Want to go over to family dinners. You went to Easter dinner. You went to all the events. <laughs> Shall I wake up? Don't be sleeping. Drew, Come on. I'm just trying to. Can you can you aim it towards what okay, the question I'm was? Okay, I'm aiming it. I don't like that word, but I'm getting to the word is, mm-hmm. and the word is stick to the task. And the stick to the task is when are you guys gonna get married? Drew, listen. <laughs> Drew, listen. No, I re- no, 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 no. Listen, okay. Mm-hmm. She is writing in. She was with a man for six years. Yes. Oh my they God. broke up. Yes. In 45 days, he started dating someone new. Yes. Her question is, how soon is too soon to start dating someone new after getting out of a relationship, especially a lengthy one? And like, and like I told them, like I just said, it's never. Like some people jump in relationships for a year, two years, they don't last. But, you know, 45 days, that's still a long time. So, so um, out of six year relationship, if I've been with you, Tiffany, for six years, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I go into a relationship with Bessie over here. Mm-hmm. And Bessie. me and Bessie only... Yeah, Bessie, Bessie, Bessie. Okay. So me and Bessie only been in a relationship for 45 days, mm-hmm. right? No, no, I, no. He waited 45 days until he started, until talking, he started, to started talking to somebody Okay, and that's, that's a very... That's that's actually so good because usually I'm done the next day. Oh, so you when you break up, you own to somebody new the next Correct. day. Correct. Oh. So don't you get what I was saying, <laughs> Linda? Just, I guess I, that's her point. Men don't love like women. No, I, don't oh, like, I don't like. I don't like generalizations. I hate no, it. men. But don't, that is women true. Don't. No, it's not. Oh my God, you guys cope a certain kind of way. Don't say men, you got. There are most men, men. Okay, most men. Okay, there you go. Going through a most breakup. Men most that you men. Have dealt with. No, most men that I you know. You deal with those DL men. Most, so. most men. Okay. Move on. Their way of moving, moving on and grieving is the next woman to go out with their friends to kick it, yeah. drinking, uh-huh. having a good time. Time, yeah. sleeping with multiple women. That's yeah. how a lot of men cope. Women, we don't move like that. Right. Naturally, we go Lies. to our friends. We chilling. We crying. We grieve. We feel it. And then even, that's how we get past it after. It takes us a little longer, but after about six months to a year, okay, now we outside. But by that time, now you guys is reversed. Yeah. Now y'all dealing yeah. with it because y'all tried to run from the pain. Yeah. So that's, what I, that's all I'm saying. But my whole thing is, what if the breakup is because of something you did? Okay. Dude. So is that too quick then? 
Yeah. Yeah. What, if, what, if the break, what if the breakup? Imagine you know what you know what scenario comes to mind. What? The one off Insecure with Issa and uh, and um, what was dude Lance or whatever, okay. right? So she cheated. Okay. So yeah, he was heartbroken and then he got outside. How, for a how long, fast? Immediately. Okay. I because, yeah, that. you get what I'm saying? But that saying? ain't got nothing to do with your heart. Why did you have to jump into the arms of another woman just Why because Why did you have I to jump into the arms of another I man? I understand it. Leave her. I totally get that. Yeah, so he I'm left saying her. how, why is that your coping mechanism? If you cheated on me, it's I gotta, over. I'm trying to keep my mind It's off over, me. but I'm not going to jump into bed with another man. Well, you that did it while bad. we was together, oh, so hell. I get it. So if it Shorty it jumped in the bed real fast, that means that um, he's been looking at one of your homegirls for the longest or somewhere near you. So that means, like, they say, if you cheated on Shorty, right? Mm -hmm. And then Shorty cheated, and you go into a different relationship, Shorty already with one of your homegirls. What? I don't know. I, I tried to okay. find him. <laughs> Commercial I really break. <laughs> I feel lost in that because you guys are trying to I know you know what? Go I'm going to hell, Shorty. Okay. You go to hell, Jesus you Christ. stop there, you'll be a man. That boy. Uh, Lord, Jesus. Uh, uh, no. Uh -uh, you you cheat a lot. I'm sensational, honey. <laughs> Love was always supposed to be something wonderful to me. To watch it grow inside yourself To feel your heart to satisfy Sometimes it hurts to love so bad When you know you're giving all you can Sometimes it hurts to even laugh You do your best but still it's much too bad Sometimes the pain it's just too much, and it hurts like hell. That's the way it feels. All right. Now, as usual, he just got the whole thing just mixed up. Now, the letter said, like, you know, her and her boyfriend broke up after six years, and within 45 days, he was already dating someone else. All right? Why is he thinking that they jump into a 45-day-old relationship? You see, he don't be paying attention. Okay? And you can hear the frustration in Shorty's voice, Timmy over there cracking the hell up. All right? Um, and he's just not getting it. He's just not getting it, okay? And you know how he lead off, you know, saying, you know, off top is with uh, Tiffany Fox and, and Shorty. And hell, that's why I need to be any damn way. Because he, he, his brain is not there. But like I, you know, stated before, his mind is trying to come up with a, a, a read or something which <laughs> he can't do either read and he's just not paying attention now i'm thinking he ain't supposed to be looking at these damn questions ahead of time ain't he supposed to rehearse this shit but it, apparently they're not doing that okay i don't know if they're trying to set his ass up for value or what but yeah that that train been left the damn station but no so <laughs> <laughs> and, and Shorty had to break it down to him, and he still didn't get it. Now, like I said, the situation is that, you know, the woman and her boyfriend, you know, broke up after six years, and he jumped into a 45-day-old relationship right after. Now, well, he jumped into a relationship 45 days after they broke up, and she doesn't seem like she can do that because she's, you know, in a stage of, you know, grieving still after six years, and that's totally understandable. Um, for and everybody is different, okay. Everybody is different on how they, you know, move when they out of long term relationship and things of that nature. And you know, for me, what and she didn't state the circumstance of why they broke up, okay. So we just can't say, oh, he cheated or she cheated, you know, or whatever. We just can't, you know, say that, but. Every circumstance is different. Every person is different on how they move. Now, a person like me, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> if 
I'm in a long-term relationship with someone. I'm not going to jump into another relationship soon after. You know, it's going to take me a while. Now, my thing is, I ain't going to cry over no man. Okay? I'm not going to cry over no man. You know, you come to me and say, you know, I don't think it's working out. You know, now this is long term. I don't think it's working out. And, you know, we, you know, I just think we need to go our separate way. I'm going to be like, okay. Okay. And I'm, and that, and that's my process of starting to get back to me, get you out my system, okay, and move on. I'm not going to sit there and, and cry, you won't bleed, don't leave me alone. I'm not going to do all that. I'm not. Okay, that's me. Okay, that's me. I've done that, you know, plenty of times before, you know. And they be looking at me like, are you serious? It's like that? I'm not going to beg you to be with me. I'm not going to beg you to stay with me. I'm not going to do that. Because I know what I brought to the relationship. I know how good of a woman I am to you. But you feel like you need something else or somebody else. Go on, do your thing, brother. Go on. I ain't going to stop you. Bye. Adios. Sayonara. You know, I'll be with you. Bye. <laughs> like, you know, but I understand, you know, she... She feels like, you know, he didn't give time, you know, for the relationship to, you know, dissolve and everything. Um, but my advice to her is just to start working on yourself, you know, try to flush him out the system. Although it's going to be hard, get busy, pick up um, a hobby or two, you know, be around your friends more, you know, and I'm not saying jump back into dating. Okay, it's six years. Don't jump back into dating. Work on yourself first. First and foremost. All right? And then, you know, later on down the line, if you, you know, meet somebody and you feel like you're ready to go and start dating, do that. But you have to work on you first. You have to work on you first. All right. Um, and that's on, on that topic. And I will tell you this. Um... Shorty is starting to do these, uh, what would you do Wednesdays? You know, he asked Tiffany, you know, as far as a question for the men, and she asked a question for the women, for the men. And, you know, and they, act the, and they respond respectively. Now, what I like about this is that it's like they're doing their own thing on the side. But in front of Andrew's face, because he really doesn't have any input in these types of conversations. When it comes to these questions, he don't have no input until, like, he just sits there and he just listens. And then he comes at the last minute when it's the woman's turn to sit there and speak on the woman's side. You know. Um, he, but he just can't sit there, but... As usual, you know, he always want to say, oh, he, he's been in this relationship. He, he can't do that. And I think that this is good. But like I say, the majority of the show is just Tiffany and Shorty talking. He's not saying anything. He may put in, you know, try to do a little read or something. And like I said, it, it'd be lame. But... He really don't bring nothing. He doesn't bring anything to the conversation. He can't add to the conversation. He can't. And when he do, he try to make, you know, fun of it. Try to make a comedic moment of it. And it's just like, you know, whatever. Shorty cut the commercial. You know what I'm saying? Um, what else? Also, this fool got up here and said that uh, he had 12 restraining orders on people. And he's getting them all extended. And Tiffany asked him, you know, what do he do to attract that type of attention from people? He really couldn't answer. He really couldn't answer that. And I said in my mind, his mouth, his mouth, the way he go out here and dogging on people. And it's like, 
who, who are these 12 restraining orders against? And, and he's like, um, he has the evidence of them harassing him. Oh, no, 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 you go and lie about the evidence. Okay. Because we damn sure know that you lied on Diddy from Dizzy Nation. We damn sure know that. Okay. <laughs> and you admit it online that you lied to get the restraining order. You nitwit. And it's amazing. I don't know what's going on with the St. Louis County uh, justice system and the Missouri justice system for you to sit there and take a restraining order on a lie and not ask him to provide the evidence. What evidence did he provide or did he show the court that Diddy uh, was harassing him? Huh? What evidence? I really want to know. With, uh, let me say, none. He just went there and straight up lied. You lied. But see, the thing of it is, is that I wonder how the judge is going to feel about you coming and trying to stay in restraining orders when you got a case of assault against your ass coming up already. You go around terrorizing people. But you don't want to have restraining orders on people. Ain't that something? And I doubt that he had 12 restraining orders because they're going to be looking at him like, why are you in here? Because me as a judge, I'm be like, I'm be like, you know what? What are you doing to provoke these people? Because you, you're having 12 restraining orders. That's a lot. Hell, even celebrities don't even have 12 restraining orders on people. But see, he act, but see, the thing of it is with Andrew, it's his mouth. It's his mouth. And he going to get restraining orders because he thinks that it's going to protect him. Let me tell you something. He, he has offended too many people. Okay, you you got restraining orders on twelve people. That's it. He has too many enemies to put restraining orders on. He think these restraining orders gonna protect him from from people. You got people in St. Louis that don't like you, but see, he wanna sit there and get in his car after he got get off of work, and he wanna drive around all day and wait until nightfall to go home. That's what he do. Because he's scared. He has to keep himself surrounded by these, um, I'm going to call them top dogs in St. Louis. So no one will put their hands on him. Because he goes around and he runs his mouth. He offends people. And the people that sits up there and coddle him and trump him around the city like uh, Tashara Jones, the mayor of St. Louis, okay, uh, Rasheen, he's the alderman in St. Louis. Um, Keisha Lee, he's the CEO of Annie Malone. Y'all trump this boy around St. Louis. And he has the nasty mouth. He sit here calling black women dolls, monkeys, gorillas, whores and tricks on, on live air. But y'all trump his ass around though. He want to be up under y'all for protection. He's trying to get some influence so he can go in front of that judge and be like, oh, I'm the perfect citizen, and he's not. His record shows that. Y'all better be careful about the company you keep, and he, and, and he ain't good company. He is not. Oh, you think because he's sitting here driving luxury, which is not his, okay, it's rented. He wearing a, a damn flat-ass, funky-ass fur coat. They ain't seen a day of cold storage, okay? And then Rasheed, he don't even like homosexuals, according to him. And Rasheed, he's um, an open gay alderman. So why are you hanging around Rasheed if you don't like homosexuals, huh? Oh, no, you like his influence of the city. So it don't matter if he's gay or not, as long as he has that influence. He has that, he can give you some type of protection. You don't care what he is, huh? You see? That's how he plays you. And once he's done with you, once he done got what he need out of you, oh, he's done with you. See, after the witness done got rid of his ass, he got to find some more people to sit there and try to get him protection when he go around St. Louis and doing all of these hideous things. And that could go on for so long because let me tell you something, he going to run into the wrong person. He going to run into the wrong person one of these days. And he thinking he going to sit there and, you know, call somebody out their name and snatch their phone, somebody's going to knock him dead unconscious. And he ain't going to be able to wake up. 
his mouth overload that funky flat ass of his. So y'all, Tashara Jones, Mayor St. Louis, you, you better be careful, honey. You better be careful. And I don't understand why he won't be uh, behind um, political people anyway. He not even registered the damn vote. He ain't never voted. But y'all got him trumping around y'all, though. Like he all of that because he on a radio station, please. He don't do nothing for that city. Nothing. Shorty is an advocate in the city. Shorty has done a lot for his city. What has Andrew done? Not a damn thing but, but brain chaos. And what else? Oh, and like I had posted, you know, on my Instagram, you know, how Shorty, you know, he has these uh, little takeaways, you know. And, mo and lately his takeaways been to me, in my opinion has been directed towards Andrew. And me as a person, I would do that too. Because, especially for a person who Andrew, who don't, who don't get it. You can sit there and tell him, you know, I don't want to hear that. You know, you know, whatever, man. You know, you know, you just straight up lying. And he, he is the type of person to be like, oh, I'm not lying, but we know that you're lying. So Shorty is doing these little takeaways and try to, you know, hit him. You know, but you know how his brain where he ain't gonna get it. You wanna floss about what you have and what you got, and it could be taken away from you the next day. And they got on about Lil Nas X, you know, and of course, you know, Tiffany, you know, you know, the whole plan with God thing. And he really didn't have anything to say on that either. He don't. Because you know why? He he's not relatable. He's not relatable to any conversation they have on that show. They don't. He can't carry on the conversation. He can't. Um, but that's all I got, people. That's all I have for that. But you know how we do. We're going to kick it down in the comments. And that's all for now.